Hey everyone, welcome back to the Going Scared podcast. This is your host, Jessica Honiger, founder of the social impact fashion brand, Noonday Collection. Join me here every week for conversations on living lives of purpose by leaving comfort and going scared. Today's guest is Ja Jong, and I met Ja Jong via YouTube. Ja Jong was so afraid of rejection that he decided to put himself through rejection therapy. For 100 days in a row, he was determined to be rejected every day, and he videoed himself and posted it all on YouTube. Now, I was extremely inspired by this video because I lead a sales organization of these amazing women, these Noonday Collection Ambassadors, and one of their biggest obstacles to success is their fear of rejection. You know what? I don't blame them because that has been a huge fear in my life as well. I think all the way back to the very first Noonday collection trunk show that I hosted at my house before I knew it was going to be Noonday, before I knew it was going to be a business, I was raising money in order to bring our third child into our home via adoption, Jack. And I did not have enough money to complete that international adoption. So I started this side hustle by selling all of these African made goods, but then I also was clearing out my closet. My grandma's china was for sale. If you could buy it, it was for sale. And I opened up my home one night for a whole bunch of women. And I got to do that night. And I wanted to call it all off. I was so sure that no one was going to come. And then I was really just afraid of how I was going to feel. That I was going to feel like a big loser. I was going to feel rejected, but I'm so glad I didn't call it off because people did come. And that was the night where I really began to understand what courage is. That courage isn't about fearlessness. Courage is being scared and going anyway. And that is exactly what Ja discovered as well. He is the world's foremost expert on rejection. He's the founder and CEO of Wuju Learning, a company that trains organizations and employees to become fearless. It does not get more perfect than having him on our Going Scared podcast. Give it a listen. Well, Ja, I'm super excited to have you on because here's the deal. I lead a sales organization. We are a social impact brand, and we create impact by purchasing product from artisans that live in vulnerable communities around the world. And then our salespeople, we call them Noonday Collection Ambassadors, they create a marketplace for these goods. So it's a direct social impact model. And a lot of our Noonday Collection ambassadors are what I would say feel reluctant salespeople. Okay. These are people who are, a lot of them, they're doing this as a side hustle. They're very drawn by the purpose. They might discover, oh my gosh, there's a lot of income potential in this job after they sort of sign up. But let me tell you, I'm constantly having to overcome their own obstacle of fear of rejection. So when I came across your TED talk and your whole concept about rejection therapy, I thought this is brilliant. And so I want to hear, I want you to break down the whole story and what you learned from your experiment. So basically, um, I've been wanting to, um, I have this dream of mine, which is I want to be an entrepreneur, you know, and I had this dream from a very uh, young age, but I have have had this fear of getting rejected, uh, whether through my idea or is telling my family members that I'm, I want to become an entrepreneur, that those fear of rejections have helped me back for a long, long time. So even after I finally take a, a plunge to to actually become an entrepreneur and, and, and start my own company, uh, I got rejected with the investment. And I, I felt, you know, after that, I my first thought is I should quit. You know, if the the investor knew a lot more about the business than I do, if he was invest, uh, it was if he was rejecting me, that must means my idea wasn't good. So that's my first thought. Then I just realized, you know, this this thinking line of thinking is terrible. Right? It's a uh, would anyone successful be at anything like think this way? No way. So and that's where I, I realized that I really have this fear of rejection that's holding me back when I was an entrepreneur. I was holding me back when I became entrepreneur. 
is holding is going to hold him back、uh, into the future. That's why I started this experiment. And would you say at that point you were able to really say, because we have a fears of a lot of things as an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur, and at the beginning when I was launching my business, I. I think what was my biggest fears, and this podcast is called "Going Scared," so it is all about walking through our fears. I was so worried about what other people were going to think of me. It was like I, I was worried how I was going to be perceived because I was doing it in a、yep. very scrappy way. So, did you kind of assess all the different things you could be afraid of, and you thought, you know what, it's the rejection piece that is what's going to hold me back from? Eventually, becoming a successful entrepreneur. Yeah, and and、uh, you know, absolutely. That's the I feel that was the biggest piece I had、uh, that I was afraid of.、Uh, there's the fear of failure, right? There's a fear of you do something that you just couldn't get it done. There's a fear of missing out. There's all those type of fears, but it was the rejection, the where you face someone else face to face when you make the request and they assess the request and they say no. That feels very personal. That feels like you know they're not they're saying no to me because of who I am, and that of course there's a lot of a wrong psychology in there because they're when they're saying no, there are a lot of other reasons that I was overlooking.、Uh, but it was so easy to make that connection between what they're rejecting and me.、Uh, also, to talk about your point, right? That that fear of being seen by others to say, well, am I failing? And that's what we have is called a spotlight effect.、Uh, meaning, we think the world is watching us. We think like we're so important.、Uh, everyone's watching what we're doing. So if we fail, they're gonna they're gonna just line up in front of a house and tell us how terrible we are, right? But this is not the case because no one cares about what I was doing. Uh, they, they, some people because they all have their own spotlight effect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're all like they have their own career, they have their own,、uh, you know,、uh, insecurities and fears. They're all dealing with that, right? They don't have time to worry about, you know, how bad you're looking.、Uh, so that's what I learned very quickly. You know, I, I thought everyone cares, but no one did. But then what happened? What what was interesting is when I started having success, right? When I was getting a lot of tractions, when I was getting the media attentions, when I was speaking everywhere. Then people started to care. They're like, "Oh wow, you know, I did not think he was gonna be able to do this, and this is like a miracle. This is amazing. I want to have what he have. I want to achieve what what he achieved." So then people started to to pay attention. So I often tell people the people who really care and about how other people perceive them, and you know that 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 basically accounts for most of us, right? That there you should. If you really care, you should just just go out and try things. Because if you fail, no one will care,、um, and no one will even see it. But if you succeed, everyone will see it, and then, and then you can, and they will they will value you highly. Well, your point is you can only succeed through failure and rejection, which is what you find out. So walk walk us through your experiment. So basically, I, I thought, okay, I was so afraid of rejection, right? And this this fear is holding me back.、Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna overcome this fear. And I'm gonna have some fun in be、uh, in the meantime. So I found something called rejection therapy,、uh, and I found this thing online, and、uh, it was invented by a Canadian entrepreneur. And then I, I was like, okay, I want to do this. And the idea is, you go out and get rejected once per day on purpose. And if you do this for say 30 days, you will become like this.、Uh, you know, you, you become this tough guy, right? You 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 become this this person who's who's so fearless. You desensitize yourself from the pain, you know. And so I thought that's a great idea. I'm I'm gonna do this, but I'm not gonna do this for thirty days. I'll do this for a hundred days. I want to see if I I mean overdose on rejection. I want to see what kind of tough guy you know I can develop. So that's what I did. So every day I would go out and get rejected on purpose,、uh, and I would film myself using、um, getting rejected, and I put this on YouTube. To make a video blog,、uh, and walk us through、thing. some of those those stories, some of those things that you came up with. Yeah. So, for example, one day I would,、uh, the first day I would go out and I would ask someone to、uh, to borrow a hundred dollars, right? Just just went to a stranger and say, "Can I borrow a hundred dollar from you?" Then the next day I went to uh, uh, like a、uh, like restaurant and asked them to give me a burger refill after having a burger for lunch,、uh, and、uh, I was just getting rejected left and right there, right? But then, a strange things started to happen. Like as I kept doing this, and people started to say yes to me. 
on uh, and you know, for example one one day i i i was, had a soccer ball in my hand and i knocked on someone's door and got the guy opened the door and i said can i can i play soccer in your backyard and he was like sure so and i started playing so i like I was like, wow, now what? You know, I didn't think this through. How to play soccer <laughs> with myself in the backyard. So, and uh, then another day I was like, I was, uh, see, a, I saw a police car and I said, I said, can I drive your car? And uh, the police officer said, ah, you look, you know, sure, you can do it. And I'm like, okay. I did not, I did not know I could do it. Right. It was just all these kind of things. And after getting yeses and left and right. And the most famous one that I, I probably, a lot of people uh, know about me through this is, when I when I went to um, Krispy Kreme, right, the the, the you know the, the donut shop, and I said, "Can I make donuts that look like Olympic rings?" Uh, I mean, can I ba- basically can you interlink five donuts together and make the, them look like like the you know the Olympic symbol? And I there, I thought there's no way she was gonna say yes, and I was gonna come in and just make some jokes, and then 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 you know then leave. As it turned out, she took me so seriously. She was like, huh, what does the color look like? How can I do this? And then, you know, uh, 15 minutes later, there's a box of donuts that look like Olympic rings. So it was this all this kind of crazy request that I not only I got rejected and I, I felt okay, I actually got a lot of yeses. Tell me about the transformation of your ask through that time. Because I would imagine at first you're just kind of like expecting a no Right. But then, I mean, I'm just yep. imagining that you're thinking, how am I going to convince this person to let me drive their police? Like, how did you begin to refine your ask so that you would get a yes? So at the beginning, right, at the beginning, my thought is this is going to be the most terrible thing, I've, I mean, most terrifying thing I've ever done. I'm going to re- get rejected every day. But my goal is to just get that rejection and toughen myself up and just be uh, and then be this tough guy. Uh, but as it turned out, like after, right after the first day or second day, I, I just felt like, okay, I, this feels different. And because I didn't, I got rejected, but I didn't die. You know, no one, no one had, you know, put a, no one put out a pepper spray. No one cussed me out. No one called the police. All they did was still say no. And I felt okay afterward. So I started to lose the fear. Right. Before going, I had all kind of terrible scenarios I was talking about in my mind. But when it played out, none of that scenarios came to pass. And I felt, wow, this is not really not bad. And so when you lose the fear, you can start experimenting. You can start having fun. You can start just like, you know, analyzing yourself. So later on, I was getting and, and when I didn't have the fear bother me as much and I was like, OK, uh, I make to make sure I stand up straight. I to make sure I smile. I to make sure I put the other person at ease. And I to make sure when I got rejected, I have a follow up request. I can ask for something else, right? And then I can make sure that I will figure out to figure out why he, you know, that person was rejecting me. Maybe I can turn that around. How can I reduce the risk that she's perceiving? So I came up with this all kind of follow up uh, techniques uh, that just because I. Do, I mean, just because I lost the fear. Wow. So you think as you lost this fear of rejection, you were able to engage better in how you were making an ask because you weren't just focused on yourself and, oh my gosh, they're going to reject me and I'm going to feel bad. But instead you began to think about them and how you could make this request maybe in more service to them and what they would actually say yes to. Absolutely. It's, it's really about practice. It's really about, you know, when, when, you ha- when you're driven by fear, your uh, reaction is like this uh, crocodile brain, right? You're, you're just fight or flight. And you start relying on your instinct, right? And then, then your performance is never as good when, you're re- when you rely in just on instinct. And, uh, and, but when, you, when you're having this experience, when you, when you calm yourself down, then you can you know, experiment, you can focus on techniques. So that's where the next step I went to, which is I can, I could start focusing on these techniques. And so tell us about some of those techniques, because I'm thinking about so many people, I mean, so many, many of us are in sales. And even if your job isn't for sales, we're ultimately, you're selling something. If you're a mom, you're might be selling an idea to your kids, like brush your teeth. I need you to brush your teeth every day. You know, I mean, so we are all in these positions. 
multiple times a day where we're, we could be rejected. So let's talk a little bit about some of these techniques. Yes. Um, so for example, right, when you get rejected, uh, and, and often people think that's the end of a conversation, right? I came up with everything I had. I've made a reasonable request and the other person said no. Well, that means the end of it. As it turned out, that's usually the beginning of it. Mm. If you can sustain your, your conversation, our, our natural instinct it's not to say yes to you, it's to say no to you, especially when it comes to something that's new, especially when it comes to something that's uh, that's unknown, right? So think about it, if you walk on the street and you get a lot of requests, you're just, you know, you're, your natural reaction is like, I'm gonna say no to all of these, then I find out, you know, which one of these is beneficial. If you say yes to every single thing that comes your way, it's just chaos, right? So, so, so I learned that, okay, no doesn't actually mean the end of it, right? Then the next step is I can start asking, all right, man, why? You know, can I can I figure out the under what's the underlying reason? And if you, if I get a reason, can I actually work on that reason to turn that reason to solve your doubt to solve that issue? Right? Then I can actually turn that uh, possibly turn that no around. And I can also say, hey, um, I I I I know I got rejected, but man, I know how I can get a yes because I really want to do this because of one, two, three reasons, right? You know, I, I'll give my own reason, but how I can, how I can make this happen? When you say the word how, so basically you're turning this table around, right? You're actually bringing the other person to your side of the table and looking at the problem from the same lens. Uh, and people start solving problems with you. They were like, huh, how can you do this? Huh? Let me think, uh, maybe I can do it for you. Or maybe there's some other way. A lot of, you know, so oftentimes the, the, if you ask how, the the solution you they can come up with is often you know it could be better than the one you originally asked so there there are a lot of things you can do so i want to hear a little bit about how this has impacted your professional life because for me i can think like i don't know this person at the donut shop it's kind of fun it's almost like a prank it's like a truth or dare but that is very different than going and pitching a business idea to investors and getting rejected like you, there's more of a stake there's a higher stakes rejection there so your hypothesis is that if i just go get rejected by random strangers asking them to do these like truth or dare type things that'll just help me get used to being rejected and has that, in fact, had a halo effect on maybe areas where you are having more of a higher stakes um, conversation or ask? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I, there are on two different levels, right? On the first level is, <clears throat> so I, the, although the stakes are different, the feelings are very similar. You go out and ask for something, you get rejected, you don't feel good. You don't feel good, right? Um, so just think about playing the game of basketball, right? And when the end of the game, the person is making a free throw uh, to win or lose the game. And, and people are thinking, okay, that's when the game is won or lost. But actually, the, the, you know, what happened is that person has been in the dark gym when no one is watching and, and she's like practicing over and over again. Then, so when the game is on the line, that person can perform, can you know, can put ball, you know, can put the ball in the hoop. But if you don't practice, if you have no experience of this, then when the things are on the line, then you're not going to perform. You, you, the, 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 you know, the ball will, will, you know, will just fly out. So you have to use the low stake uh, scenarios and and opportunities to practice to 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 train your your muscle memory. So when things are high stake, you know what to do. Um, so there's one part of the practice part. The other part is I almost feel like there is a is it, it made me it has a uh, memory to fall upon. So often in my times, right, before I go into pitching to a client um, on the phone or in person, and I was afraid, you know, I could be afraid. I'm like, what if this doesn't work? What if that person start laughing at me? Right? What if, what if this the conversation doesn't go well? Then I then I thought about, okay, you know, and if I just with that mentality alone, I'm not going to succeed. But if I think back, uh, knowing that, hey, I'm the one who who go out and, and get, I got rejected a hundred, you know, once per day for a hundred days, right? If I got to do that, I could do those. I mean, I can do this. So it's almost like putting on an invisible cape that then people don't see, but give me so much strength. So uh, yeah, so uh, there are on two different levels. This this uh, you know, like things like rejection therapy would help me. So you wanted to be an entrepreneur. That's your dream. Then you realized you pitched your idea and you 
were paralyzed by that rejection. And you thought, if I'm going to be successful, I got to get over this. That led you to mm-hmm. this entire experiment. But that experiment has led to a career or a, like a profession, you know, which you were not expecting that at all. I can imagine when you were just putting your videos on YouTube, you weren't thinking, I'm going to be known as the rejection guy. So tell me a little bit about that. Um, How are you now using the influence that you gained from this experiment to now run, be an entrepreneur and actually fulfill the dream that you've always had? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is kind of crazy, isn't it? Um, When I started, my my whole thought is I'm going to, I want to be able to, you know, build this mobile app that uh, many people will use. Uh, So that's why I want to be an entrepreneur. uh, And what was the mobile app again? What was it? So. The mobile app was a long time ago. It's called Hoopla. It's, it's, it's really a, a cool idea, but then then there's a lot of flaws to it. So, um, but no one was using it, and I was still no one was using it. Like, so I shut it down later because, man, as you mentioned, this rejection thing is so much bigger, and also got so much traction, and people are responding to it on a very emotional level, right? And then as it turned out, like everyone's was afraid of rejection. As an entrepreneur, you you don't do things just because you you think it's cool. Uh, maybe you start with it, but you do things because you know you think there's a market, right? You're solving a need, right? This this fear of rejection, I might have just found the biggest need and you know, one of the biggest need that we 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 have. So I've been mean, uh, so uh, ever since that day, I, you know, I've been uh, teaching people through my blog, and I've started speaking everywhere. Uh, and I've been getting invited to some of the some of those big conferences and big companies. Uh, in fact, some of the videos become a standard training material for people for salespeople how to get you know how to overcome the fear of rejection. So I published a book, uh, and so and but nowadays I'm actually going back to my technology route, right? I be, I'm building this uh, new mobile app. It's called a Dare Me. Uh, it's, mentioned, it's funny you mentioned the word uh, truth or dare, right? And, but I use the word dare because I, I love it so much. It's called Dare Me. Uh, and I, w- what I do is, what I found is, hey, I, I became, I transformed myself. Not because I read a book or watch a video or anything like that or heard a talk. It was because I put myself in front of my real people, getting real rejections. And that would, only actions would change me. Um, and then I thought, okay, how can I have my audience systematically do get rejected like I did, which is really hard. You know, people have motivation to do things, but but sometimes motivations don't translate into actions. So then I started experimenting. And so I, so that's why I built this app, uh, Dare Me, that, that give people challenges in the social setting. Like they do it together uh, with each other, with a both friendly competition to actually do tough things. So when people are, uh, so people are able to translate their motivation into action. What are some of the craziest dare that you're like, oh yeah, that really freaks people out? Um. So, okay. So there, there, there are there are a few, right? For, for example, <laughs> one there there one thing that I uh that I did was it was really tough. Is I want to just dance with a stranger on the street <laughs> and just say, can you dance, can you dance with me, right? That's really tough. Uh. And there was another one that I uh, that I was like I was giving a public I was I was giving a speech on the street. Uh, I live in Austin at, at the time, uh, Austin, Texas. And one there, uh, you know, one 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 challenge is I'm gonna go out to the uh, to downtown Austin and just start giving a speech on the street. It was really tough because when you do, not only you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it for a sustain for a you know for 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 amount of time. You're gonna have an audience and people are gonna judge you all kind of ways. So yeah, there there are quite a few things that are pretty crazy. Although I have to say, I live in Austin, and it's not too crazy to have people just start giving speeches, <laughs> especially in down, <laughs> especially in the UT campus. So I don't know; it depends on where you were, but you know, we like to keep it weird down here. Uh, that's yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so when you're going and training, because now you said that sales teams have asked you to come in and they're using your video as standard training for sales. How do you then make the leap from these fun 
what could be fun. I'm someone, obviously, it's my podcast is called Going Scared. I'm all about getting people outside of their comfort zones, which I think is why this this so appealed to me. But I really wanted to have this conversation in service to the many female entrepreneurs that are wanting to build their businesses with Noonday Collection or perhaps with the other business that they're, they're working with right now. And how do you get how do you translate and go from getting rejected because someone says, I'm not going to dance with you on the street? How do you go about practicing the sales rejection? Okay, the best way to do it is just to do it, you know, <laughs> to go out and, and, and just think about it, right? There, instead of having all these things in our mind, right, that, that are, are, are just in my mind to, to say all the scenarios, how I can practice this, how can I, uh, when something hap- like this happened, I'm going re- to react this way. You know, just having all the scenarios in your mind, do something called the five seconds rule, which was by uh, Mel Robbins, uh, this, this, uh, this author. That, so basically, you're like, you, you have an idea. We see someone just go on and do it. Just, just say, hey, you, would you want to try to make a pitch, try to make a sale, right? And then, then if it doesn't happen, just move on. It's okay. So when you do that, you're, what, what, what end up happening is you, you don't think yourself out of an opportunity. You just go out and approach and, and see if that can happen. A lot of times, like it's almost 99%. Um, it, it's not as bad as you think. Um, so just, just do yeah, it. Just, just, just do don't it. think too much. Just do it. Yeah. You use the action. To just get over yeah. it. Yeah. One of the key objections that we hear from our entrepreneurs is they're afraid to appear pushy. They don't want to be that mm-hmm. pushy salesperson. What would you say to that obstacle? Yeah, you can be that pushy, uh, pushy sales uh, salesperson. It's okay. You can. How about you play that role? <laughs> how about you're like? How about I'm gonna be an actor who who plays this role of being a salesperson, right? And then because the thing is, there are so many people in the world, right? Just find a stranger and and just do it. And also, if you believe in your cause, if you really believe in what you are doing. Right. So instead of relying on saying, OK, my skills, I'm going to do this because I can talk you uh, into this. I'm going to sell, uh, you know, I'm going to sell um, ice to Eskimos. And, you know, I mean, that's a saying. Right. Instead of doing that, think about how why you're interested in what you're what you're selling. Right? What's what's this thing that appeals to you? And then make that your your why make that your expression. Right. But talk about that. So. There are a lot of things you don't have to be like, okay, I'm, I'm selling bad things to, to good people. It's about how do I bring value to these people who don't know about this, right? And uh, so, and then, then think about yourself. I live in Silicon Valley, and this is really the idea that, I mean, a lot of, I mean, I've built software now. A lot of people are building software in this way where don't think yourself as finished product, right? Think yourself as a prototype. Um, in software, you have this thing called a minimal viable product, which is you build something, then you let user use it, you get feedback, then you then use the use your feedback to improve on the features and make it better, make it better. Then gradually, the you know if every day, if, if every month you can make your product fifteen percent better, by the end you're gonna have a pretty cool product, you know, over the years. Just think about this the way in your life, right? Don't don't think you're you're a finished product, and then when you go out and if you succeed, that means you're a great uh, salesperson. If you fail, that means you're terrible. I mean, don't think that way. Think of yourself as a work in progress. Come in and 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 train yourself, and use the people's other people's feedback to strengthen your your sales techniques. And so that's what there every you know every opportunity will everything will, every rejection will become opportunity. So you know I really lo- like when I, when I read this uh, somewhere that that. There are two outcomes, right? One is success. Another is a great lesson that you can learn to improve. Mm-hmm. So, so in this case, and if you have this mentality and go out and get rejected, and if you get rejected, hey, use that to improve. I love that. I just read this quote by Bill Gates. It says, success is a terrible teacher, which is kind of the same thing. Like if you don't have these points of failure, but you can even reframe and be like, that wasn't a failure. That was a lesson. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I love this idea that we're all just minimum viable products. We are. And then if you just get a little bit better every day. Yes. But feedback is a whole nether I love that. And I love that that's part of your process because I think that, and I I actually, I coach some of our salespeople. And one of the challenges I gave them is um, 
hey, I want you to ask the people that are on your team that you lead, and I want you to ask the people that are opening their homes for you to go in and sell at their homes with their friends. Will you ask them, hey, is what could I have done a little bit differently or better? And what did I do really well? They were scared to death to do this. They were like, yeah. oh my God, they were so scared to ask for the feedback. And yet, to your point, that's just another data point, how we can prove our minimum viable product. What do you think it is that makes people so afraid of feedback? People don't, people associate, um, think about like if you're building a software product, right? Even that you have, sometimes you have a, you have a fear to put it out there because when you launch, right now it becomes real, right? Now people are going to either like it or hate it. When people start using it, then, you know, observe them. Then you're like, oh, wow, this is not good. This is not what I, how I intended to be. That means I'm a terrible engineer. That means I'm a terrible designer, right? So people can make that connection. That's there's that's why people have this hesitation to launch until they somehow can think that can can you know close close behind door, uh, you know, I mean sit behind a closed door and just try to perfect this thing and and forever they don't launch. Now think about doing that in person, right? You are the product. You go out and that's even more uncomfortable because you're it's easy to actually draw that connection to uh, of your self-worth versus people's reaction to you but just know like right just have this growth mentality and then people i mean this is the kind of a cliche now like like having the growth mentality but it's so true and it's so makes a huge difference when you go out and uh how do you improve yourself if you have the growth mentality you know that you're not you're not done in fact you're just you're just a starting point you have to improve you have to like just just rapidly improve yourself to 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 be to be a better um so that's why that that's how you can perform and you cannot think yourself you cannot read yourself into improvement you cannot like watch your way into improvement you cannot listen your way into improvement you have to really just go on and do these things and then you get real feedback and and, and improve so just uh you gotta have the reps and the good thing about sales is the world is your rep right you can you can get those you know you, you can get the repetition point anytime you approach someone trying to make a sale uh, and uh, the only way to do that is to, you know, create it, create these opportunities for yourself. So rejection therapy, have you thought about applying this kind of therapy to other types of fears that people have? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's underlying, the underlying principle of rejection therapy, right? There's a lot of under, underlying principles. You know, you can say the underlying uh, principle is, uh, uh, you know, flooding, this idea of you're afraid of something, then the flood yourself with that with, with that element, and you lose the fear, and there is a repetition. But what I think the biggest fundamental, uh, like, idea that, that this has become successful to me and also to a lot of people who are doing this is just, like, go on and do things, right? They just do things. Action is the only currency in success. It's not thinking, it's not ideas, it's really just actions. So whatever fear you have, whatever, you know, things that, that, that you want to overcome, do it, do it to, to rehearse, to, you know, the, don't read, don't, don't listen, just go on and do it. And very quickly you will find um, that if you just don't like this word saying, what doesn't kill us, make us stronger. Right. And then very often like that, this, Maybe you have a fear of stingrays, which I agree with you. Don't 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 be a don't, don't get too cavalier that way. But in terms of business, nothing's gonna kill you. Nothing's gonna kill you. You're you're selling products, right? If you're afraid of this pitch, you're afraid of something. Just go on and, and do it, and and then quickly you're gonna start being comfortable with that fear. And if you ask all the good salespeople, you ask you you you'll be like, okay, what what made you a great sales uh, like a great salesperson? And, and and you probably won't hear them saying, oh, I read this book or watch this, you know, I, I watch this talk. It's really about, I just go out and, do, and, and did it and got rejected. And I was able to overcome that fear and became good. So true. So true. Okay. What is the next fear that you are conquering right now? How are you going scared in your life? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, going back to my uh, tech route to build my app is a fear and I'm overcoming. And, uh, you know, and as always, Every day, I was like, "Well, people want to use this, right? That does it help people? That does it help people? And and or am I going to be do something that that people are not going to gain traction? And this is the fear that's very common with uh, entrepreneurs when, especially when they're trying to build tech products, right? Uh, and but what I what I 
I, I continue to use this as a, um, you know, as a uh, model for myself, which is, hey, there's, I'm just, if, if, if every failure, like every time there's something that goes wrong and there's a lot of things that are going wrong, they become an opportunity for me to improve this product. And they become the opportunity for, for me to, to, to make this the, the, you know, the ultimate thing. And, and also it's actually really helping people. So, um, you know, and, and my heart is at the right place and people are responding to the, you know, to it the right way. And that's why I'm, I'm having, um, you know, I'm, I'm having a great time despite all the fears and, you know, and, and, and also the risks. That's so great. I love that. And I know the growth mindset is a bit cliche, but I think it's sometimes the things that become cliche are the things that are most true. And it's, yeah. it's I mean, I've been an entrepreneur now for nine plus years, and yet I still need to be reminded of these principles. I still, if we have a dip in our business, I can go into total fear or I can go into failure. Like I'm a failure. We didn't grow this month. That means I'm a failure. Instead of saying, what did I learn? What am I learning? What can I do differently next month? And you're right. Like that is what gives gives you fun along the way. And if you quit having fun, then you're not going to get out there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, focus on like ha- having fun is, is so much so important. Entrepreneurship is hard enough, right? Doing something and uh, doing a, whether it's a service or product that people need is hard. Uh, but if you don't, if you're not having fun, if you're not enjoying what you're doing and enjoying the people you're doing this with, then that becomes even harder and to a point that's meaningless. So you got to enjoy this yourself uh, to be able to uh, make meaningful progress. I love this episode so much. In fact, this week, Noonday Collection Ambassadors and me are going to launch our own rejection therapy. We're going to do some wild and crazy ask together because I believe that courage is contagious and that we are meant to be courageous in community. And I would challenge you to, where is rejection holding you back? What's something you can do today that gets outside of your comfort zone and shows you that you don't need to be so afraid. And in fact, you probably are not going to die from getting rejected. Don't let this fear hold you back anymore. If you participate in this little self experiment, I want to hear about it. Head over to Instagram, Jessica Honiger, that is one in two G's. And let me know what you're doing. DM me, leave a comment on my post today. I want to hear all about it. I would love for you to share this episode today, forward it to a friend, screenshot it and put it in your stories. Also, if you haven't left an iTunes review yet, I would love for you to leave a review. When you leave a review, more people get to find these sorts of conversations. Thanks so much for being a listener. Before we go, I wanted to let you know that our music today is by my good friend, Ellie Holcomb. Going Scared is produced by Eddie Kohlfoltz. And I'm Jessica Honiger. Until next time, let's take each other by the hand and keep going scared. <laughs>